Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from storytellers around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids, how are you? I hope you had a happy week. My friend gave me a whole heap of apples from her tree this weekend, so I've been making everything I can think of with apples. Apple crumble, baked apple, apple pie, even pumpkin and apple soup. Scrum diddly umptious. Now, it's another two stories week. One from England and one from India. First, we hear the story about a daft hen who is most upset when an acorn falls out of a tree and hits her on the head. While we have a quick word with the grown-ups, can you think of any stories which have trees in them? Here's one to start you off. The magical tree from East Africa which Toop tells. Are you ready? Go! Well, hello there, grown-ups and Super Great Kids Stories fans. As you probably know, we depend on your generosity and support to keep making this podcast. If you subscribe and join the Owlets Club, you'll get access to all sorts of lovely extras like subscriber-only episodes, early and ad-free episodes, as well as a newsletter from Story Owl, word puzzles, book recommendations, ooh, and film footage of our live shows. To support Super Great Kids Stories and join the Owlets Club, just click subscribe in Apple Podcasts or visit patreon.com forward slash Super Great Kids Stories. Hello, Super Great Kids. It's me again. I wonder what you came up with. Did you remember The Magic Orange Tree from Haiti? Or Bikubai and the Coconut from India? Or the sausage tree from Russia. Remember that one? Or the boy who used his head from Korea. You know, where a persimmon tree grows out of his head. Now, it's time for our first story. This story is from England and it's called Henny Penny. In America and in New Zealand and Australia, the story is often called Chicken Little or sometimes Chicken Lickin'. Are you sitting comfortably? Am I sitting comfortably? Then let's welcome storyteller Rachel Murray. Hey up, super great kids. It's Rachel here and I am enjoying the autumn at the moment. The trees are magnificent and when the leaves fall, I like to dance in amongst them. And this morning, I was at a friend's house and I was watching the chickens and the chickens were scratching and pecking and pecking and scratching in the dirt. And they made me laugh because when one chicken would find something, they'd go, bah, 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 and all the others would come running over to see what was going on. And it made me think about this story that I want to tell you now. And this story is about a chicken called Henny Penny. Now, Henny Penny was not a normal, sensible chicken. Henny Penny liked to scratch and peck and peck and scratch like any other chicken, but she liked to scratch and peck under trees. And at this time of the year, there were all things falling from the trees. I imagine you've seen apples falling and collected conkers, all those beautiful little shiny brown little bits of treasure, the favourite of storytellers and squirrels. Well, Henny Penny was scratching away under an oak tree. And from the oak tree, there fell an acorn. <whistles> Boop, and bopped Henny Penny on the head. Now, any sensible chicken would have gone, Oh, an acorn just fell from the oak tree. But Henny Penny was not a sensible chicken. <whistles> she said, oh 
my goodness me, <gasps> something fell on my head. It came from the sky. It must be the sky that fell on my head. Oh no, oh no, the sky is falling in. <gasps> what shall I do, what shall I do, what shall I do? And she flapped her wings and she flapped herself. And <gasps> No, this is very important. I must go and see the king to say the sky is falling in. And without a second thought, off she went. And she walked and she waddled until she met Ducky Lucky. Quack, quack, said Ducky Lucky. Hello, Honey Penny. Where are you going in such a hurry? <gasps> said Honey Penny. I am going to see the king to say the sky is falling in. Oh! Oh, <laughs> said Ducky Lucky. That sounds very important. Can I come too? Well, yes, said Henny Penny. You can. So Henny Penny and Ducky Lucky went to see the king to say the sky was falling in. And they walked and they waddled and they waddled and they walked and they went some way and then they met Goosey Lucy. Oh, oh said Goosey Lucy. Where are you going, Henny Penny and Ducky Lucky? Oh, buck, 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 said Henny Penny. We are going to see the king to tell him the sky is falling in. Oh, 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 said Goosey Lucy. That sounds important. Can I come too? Well, yes, said Henny Penny. So, Henny Penny and Ducky Lucky and Goosey Lucy all went to see the king to say the sky was falling in. And they walked and they waddled and they waddled and they walked and they hadn't gone too far before they met Turkey Lurkey. Oh, gobble, 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 gobble. Oh, said Turkey Lurkey. Where are you going, Henny Penny, Ducky Lucky, Goosey Lucy? And they looked at him and they said, Oh, buck, 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 buck. we have important business. We're going to see the king to say the sky is falling in. Oh, gobble, 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 said Turkey Lurkey. That sounds important. Can I come too? <gasps> Why, yes, they said. So Henny Penny, and Ducky Lucky, and Goosey Lucy, and Turkey Lurkey set off to go and see the king to say the sky was falling in. And they walked and they waddled and they waddled and they walked and their feet were aching and oh my goodness me, it was a long way to the palace it seemed. And then they met Foxy Loxy. Foxy Loxy with his beautiful bushy tail and his fine pointed ears and his sharp white teeth. Hello, said Foxy Loxy. Where are you going, Henny Penny, Ducky Lucky, Goosey Lucy, Turkey Lurkey? <gasps> we have important business, they said. We are going to see the king to say the sky is falling in. <gasps> the king, you say? said Foxy Loxy. Hmm, it's a long way to the palace. It is a long way, they said. Oh, bop, 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 quack, quack, honk, honk, gobble, gobble. It is a long way, they said, and our feet are sore. Well, it's very lucky for you, said Foxy Loxy, that I know a shortcut. <gasps> How wonderful, they said. Follow me said Foxy Luxy, and with that he disappeared down the tunnel into his burrow. And he waited, and into the tunnel went Turkey Lurkey. Gobble, 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 gobble. And Foxy Luxy was waiting, with big open jaws, and stop! Gobbled up Turkey Lurkey. <laughs> oh. And into the tunnel came Goosey Lucy. And there was Foxy Loxy waiting with his mouth wide open and stop! Gobble, 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 gobble. And into the tunnel came Ducky Lucky. 
quack, quack. And there was Foxy Loxy waiting with his mouth wide open and stop! Gobble, 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 gobble. And into the tunnel went Henny Peddy. And there waiting was Foxy Loxy. And he opened up his jaws and stop! <laughs> Gobbled up Henny Penny. So Foxy Luxy ate Henny Penny and Ducky Lucky and Goosey Lucy and Turkey Lurkey. And they never got to go and see the king to tell him the sky was falling in. Thank you, Rachel, for that story. Poor old Henny Penny, hey? I love all those rhyming names, don't you? That would be a good story for you to learn and tell yourself. Now, there's another version of that story which comes from India. And I thought it would be fun for you to listen to both of them to see if you can spot what's similar and what's different about those two stories. This is called The Silly Hare. And it's one of the Jataka tales, which are a little bit like Aesop's fables, like the fox and the crow. They're very old stories with a wise message in them. Have a listen and see if you can spot the message. A long time ago in India, there lived a hare. One sunny day, the hare was resting under the shade of a coconut tree. Can you be a hare? You know, wiggle your nose. Sniffle, snuffle, sniffle. Now, waggle your long ears. Wiggle, waggle, wiggle. Wiggle, waggle, wiggle. Very good. The hare was having a think, and his thinking was going like this. Oh, what would happen if the world cracked and broke into pieces? Oh, dear. And just at that very moment, meow, blub, boing, 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 the hare heard a thud and the ground beneath him shook. And then, would you believe it, it happened again. Can you help me? Neow! Blump! Boing, boing, boing! Hare's heart thumped. <gasps> oh, no! Oh, no! The sky's falling and the world is breaking apart! And with his powerful legs, he began to run as fast as he could. Thump, thump, thumpity, thump, 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 thumpity, thump. Can you help me? Thump, thump, thumpity, thump, 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 thumpity, thump. The hare was so terrified that he simply ran. He ran faster than he'd ever run before. And then he saw another hare and he shouted, The sky is falling, the earth is breaking, run away! And that hare got a scare and he also began to run away. And then another hare heard the little scared hare, and another, and another, and soon there were hundreds of hares, all running as fast as they could and shouting. What did they shout? The sky is falling, the earth is breaking, run away! Now, how would you feel if you saw a whole bunch of hares running like there was no tomorrow? Well, all of the animals in the forest felt quite terrified when they saw hundreds and hundreds of lolloping, panicking hares, all running, thump, thump, thumpity, thump, 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 thumpity, thump. And when they heard them lift up their heads and cry, what did they cry? The sky is falling, the earth is breaking, run away! Well, quite understandably, all the animals also began to panic and joined in at a gallop and a lollop and a flutter. Soon there were tigers running with the hares, there were leopards running with the hares, there were elephants and rhinos running with the hares and, of course, there were birds flapping overhead and crocodiles and turtles following along behind as best they could on their stumpy little legs. And what a great hullabaloo they made, all shouting, The sky is falling, the earth is breaking, run away! On a high cliff, overlooking the sea, stood a majestic lion. He heard the stampede down below. He saw the animals scrambling out of the forest and tumbling towards the sea. Stop! 
he roared. Stop, 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 stop! And the animals below did a gigantic skid and they did stop. The lion paced to and fro in front of the animals. What's all this fuss? he asked. And they all began to shout at once. The sky is falling! The earth is breaking! Run away! Run away! The lion roared again for silence. Rawr! Stop! And then he asked. Who saw the sky falling? Who saw the earth breaking? The crocodiles and the turtles! shouted all the animals. So the lion turned to the crocodiles and the turtles and asked, Did you see the sky falling and the earth breaking? Who us? Yes, you. Not us. Then who? It was the elephants and the rhinos, they shouted. The lion turned to the elephants and the rhinos and asked, Did you see the sky falling and the earth breaking? Who us? Yes, you. Not us. Then who? Oh, it was the tigers and the leopards, they shouted. The lion turned to the tigers and the leopards and asked, Did you see the sky falling and the earth breaking? Who? Us? Yes, you. Not us. Then who? It was the hares, they replied. The lion turned to the hares and asked, Did you see the sky falling? And the earth breaking? They all answered, Who? Oh, us? <coughs> yes, you. <coughs> Not us. Then who? It was that hare that saw the earth breaking. Everyone turned to stare at the hare who started it all. And the lion asked the little hare, Did you see the sky falling and the earth breaking? The little hare was very nervous and he replied, Well, I was sitting under a tree, minding my own business, having a little think, when I wondered what would happen if the world cracked and broke into pieces. And then, all of a sudden, I heard a great big thud and the ground shook and I was sure the earth was breaking and the world was coming to an end so, so, so I began to run with all my might. Ho, 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 little hare, the lion laughed. I think I know what happened. And all the animals looked around them and they could see that the earth was perfectly peaceful. Far below them, the ocean waves crashed in and out as they had always done. Up above on the high bluff, the breeze blew gently through the grasses. Come with me, said the lion. Show me where you were sitting and thinking. And he gently put the little hare onto his back and together they ran faster than the wind. There, I, I, I was sitting just there underneath the tree. And then there was a really loud noise. Meow! Blum! Boing, 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 said the hare, shaking at the memory of it and leaping once more onto the lion's back. The lion saw that the tree which was sheltering hare from the sun was a coconut tree. And sure enough, there were two fat, ripe, coconuts right underneath the tree. You know what happened, don't you? And so did Lion. Ho, 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 little hare, laughed the lion. That wasn't the sky falling or the earth breaking. That was a little coconut falling from the tree above your head. Now, even the little hare had to laugh, even though he felt a bit silly. And away went the lion with the little hare, back to all the waiting animals. No need to panic, said the lion. The noise that little hare heard wasn't the sky falling or the earth breaking. It was the sound of coconuts falling to the ground. So, 
all the elephants went back to their watering holes and the leopards went back to their mountain lairs and the tigers went back to their caves and the little hare went back to his coconut tree. And life went on perfectly happily as before. Just think, if it hadn't been for the wise old lion, all those animals might have run and run and run and still be running now. And that is where that story ends. Well, super great kids, were you listening with your story detective ears? What do you think those two stories were trying to tell us? Maybe you can talk about it with your grown-ups. And did you spot what's the same and what's different between the two stories? See if you and your grown-ups can spot the differences together. It's time now for me to dip deep into my bag of happies and say some thank yous and some hellos to subscribers and super great artists. Thanks to all of our subscribers for helping to pay our storytellers. We have several new Apple and Patreon outlets this week. First of all, a big thank you to Kofi donor Evo, who is five from Millbrook in New York in the US. Evo has shared his truly splendid picture of the Welsh story, The Two Dragons. His dragons are truly magnificent. You can see them on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash supergreatkidsstories. And a big hello to Owlet's Daniel, who is eight, and Joel, who is five, who say Super Great Kid Stories are their favourite story in the dark to listen to at night time. Joel, we really hope you get better soon and that Super Great Kids stories help to entertain you while you're in hospital. Here's hoping the nurses don't find them too scary. And hello to new Owlet, five-year-old Nathan from Lenexa in Kansas in the US. Welcome to the club, Nathan. I'm glad you're enjoying the new Super Great Scary stories. Well done for being brave and listening to both the stories so far. Give yourself a pat on the back. And hello to eight-year-old Ivor, who's from Leeds in the north of England. Ivor has been asking his mum to subscribe so he can be a member of the Owlets Club. Welcome to the club, Ivor. And hello to new Owlets, three-year-old Elise and five-and-a-half-year-old David, who listens to super great kids' stories at bedtime. David's favourite stories are about King Arthur, and Elise's favourite story is The Ghost of the Bloody Finger. Wow, Elise, you are super brave to be listening to that at bedtime. Give yourself a pat on the back. Welcome all of you. I hope you enjoy being a member of our club. And now, some thank yous to those of you who've been taking our stories out of your heads and turning them into pictures. We love seeing what you see. Thanks to Indigo, who is five, from New Zealand, who sent a scary picture of lots of grinning skulls around Baba Yaga's hut. I wonder if your little sister Quill listens to Baba Yaga with you. Ooh, and Lottie, who is four from Devon, has drawn two bright and imaginative pictures of the African Cinderella story, Kia and the Purple Fish. I like the way, Lottie, that you've given all Kia's family names and the fact that they all have belly buttons. Glad you enjoyed the story. And Duke, who is six from California, has shared two wonderful pictures of how the snakes got their poison from Brazil and the griffin from Ireland. I like the brilliantly coloured rainbow snake and the birds which are always watching. And I like your picture of the griffin with its beady eye and eagle head and body of a lion. Thank you for sharing your pictures, Duke. And hello to Vivian, who is seven, from Walpole, Massachusetts in the US. Vivian has sent us an imaginative picture of the little red hairy man. What a beautiful princess you've drawn with a golden crown and red shoes. And Jack looks very brave holding up his knife as the huge hairy giant lumbers towards him. Thank you, Vivian. 
And Vivian's brother Luke, who is four, from Walpole, Massachusetts in the US, has drawn a very colourful picture inspired by the subscriber's bonus story from Serbia, The Little Singing Frog. Wow, Luke, such vibrant colours. And what a great idea to look up close at the cockerel's feathers to see what they would have looked like to a tiny little frog who is riding it. Would you like to shrink down really small to see what the world looks like through the eyes of a singing frog? And Jed, who is five, has drawn a lovely picture of the story Why Crocodiles Sleep With Their Mouths Open. Thank you, Jed. I really like your croc, newly hatched out of his egg, hiding under the table at school and demanding chocolate. Really great writing, too. I wonder what you'd do if you found a crocodile egg at school. Sienna, who is six, from Pennsylvania in the US, has drawn a brilliant picture of the two dragon story from Wales. I really like the detail on your dragon, Sienna. Their scales and claws and spiky wings and long tails. Just marvellous. Thank you. And Avalyn, who is six and lives in Wisconsin in the US, has drawn a brilliantly scary picture of Baba Yaga the Russian witch with red eyes, straggly black hair and big feet. Thank you, Avalyn. And a special hello to Elliot, who is eight, and his sister Greta, who is four and a half. Greta has drawn a picture of the Haitian story, The Magic Orange Tree, with a little girl in a pink dress who is dancing around the tree. Thanks for sharing this, Greta. And Oliver, who is five and travelling around New Zealand in a caravan with his family, has drawn two super great pictures. One of the Korean story, The Boy Who Used His Head. I like his huge smile and the way the persimmon fruit is growing on the tree which is growing out of his head. And I love the way you've drawn your tall griffin with his wings stretched out against a very stormy sky, with his home all bright in rainbow colours behind him. Just lovely. And Sven, who is six from Oregon in the US, has drawn a great picture of the fox and the crow. I love your fox with her black-tipped paws and tail and the way she's saying, will you sing? Ha ha ha! Great fun. Thanks for sharing it, Sven. And eight-year-old Nettie from Canada has sent in an imaginative picture of the bird from the African story, The Blind Man and the Hunter. I love the way you've got different textures for the feathers and all the different coloured greens you've used for the vegetation. Just brilliant. It's a moving story, isn't it, Nettie? Thank you for sharing this. And that's it for this week. Keep sending in your pictures. If you'd like to send us a picture, send it by Facebook Messenger or via our website on supergreatkidsstories.com. And if you like what we're doing, do review us. Thanks very much for lovely reviews to Porth and to Anaya Papaya and to Lillian, all in the US. And to Sophia in Canada and Maisie and Three in the UK. And a very big thanks for a lovely review to Golf Physio. And Lucia, who is five and a half in San Diego in the US. Thank you all. Hope you enjoyed our stories. This podcast was produced at Wardour Studios in London. <laughs>